Welcome everybody to update number 54. So it's been a while since I did my last update and there's been a lot of sales on since then. It was my birthday on the 31st of July. So I bought a few things uh, with birthday money that I got on that day. Um, but yeah, so yeah, we're going to get into the gist of it. Not many uh, basic Blu-rays, but these are what would count as basic Blu-rays. So first off is Nine, which is a really rather good animated film. A lot darker than a lot of animated films out there, especially in terms of, you know, Western releases. So uh, yeah, highly recommend that if you've not seen it already. And uh, yeah, Fabulous Films gave it a uh, brand new Blu-ray release only last month, I believe. So yeah, well worth watching. We've got a really good cast as well. You've got Elijah Wood, John C. Riley, Jennifer Connelly. Christopher Plummer, Crispin Glover, Martin Lando, and you got a score by Danny Elfman. So, uh, yeah, excellent film. I uh, really rather enjoy that one. And then from Studio Canal, I believe, yeah, Vintage Classics line, we have The Green Man. Not seen this yet, but uh, it's got Alistair Sims in it, uh, and he's, well, Al Alistair Sim, and he's rarely uh, puts a foot wrong in his film. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that one. And then also starring Alice Sim, we have Cottage to Let from Network. Now, Network have obviously gone defunct. I'm not sure where their stock or their licensing or anything like that that they had uh, is going in terms of that. But figured I may as well get another one from them while uh, they're still in stock. And uh, again, this stars Alice Sim. A bit older, this one. This is from 1941. Uh, but yeah. There's a disc. I won't show off the discs for everything because we have a lot, but I'll show off the ones that I feel like will uh, people will enjoy. And then from Curzon Film, we have Bellevue, Belleville Rendezvous, a French animated film. Really, really nice design um, kind of ethos to this film. And uh, yeah, it's not got much in the way of voice work because most of this film is dialogue free, but it's really, really well done. And uh, yeah. Got excellent, like I said, animation to it, and it is well worth watching. Only picked this up for only eight pounds, which for a uh, such a great film is uh, well worth it. And then a new release from Film Court, again, I think this only came out a week or so ago, is uh, You'll Like My Mother. Decent enough thriller, not one that relies on violence. It relies on more on atmosphere and its setting and the cast and the like. And uh, yeah, but still a really rather solid effort. Didn't have much in the way of expectations for it so yeah but it was still a worthwhile watch and definitely one that i enjoyed and certainly was well worth buying so uh, yeah in terms of boutique proper boutique label releases we'll get to them in a sec but then we've got a few 4ks and first of which is jaws 2 newly released on 4k not watched it yet so i'm not sure how the transfer looks but personally i think this is kind of underrated a lot of people try and shove this in with the third and fourth films when they just try and talk about the sequels as all being bad i don't think it's bad at all i think it's a worthwhile sequel and uh, yeah it does what you'd expect of a sequel it's bigger it's got more action more violence and the like but it still is a worthwhile film and uh yeah that's just to see the uh, same cast come back quite frankly and uh yeah more roy schneider is never a bad thing and then we also have a new film uh, on 4K, it is Scream 6, one of the best of the series to be honest, I think it's probably my third favourite after the first and second films, and yeah, really nice cast, and you also get a, uh, not only the slip cover with the different artwork, but you also get a bunch of art cards as well with the cast members on it. So we'll just quickly flick through those once we've looked at the film, there we go. And let's look at the art cards. So all of them have that on the back. And then you got the cast members. It was only a fiver extra for all this, so plus I do like that slip cover. So yeah, nice art cards, they're all nice and thick, so they're not like the kind of weak and uh Paulie May kind of art card, so that's fine. And then I got on my birthday, yeah, on the 31st, I got picked up this from FOP, which is basically the subsidiary of HMV. And uh, yeah, Casablanca on 4K. After seeing it on 4K at the cinema, I decided to finally get upgraded yeah, for my home uh, collection. And yeah, it was also eight quid cheaper than it was originally from 2022. So, uh, yeah, well worth getting, and uh, you get a whole host of extras with this. 
chief among which is some art cards with shots from the film, only in colour this time I believe, yeah, plus sketches of the sets. So this is the shots from the film, which are really, again, really nice art cards. Not sure what that is, to be honest, but it's probably something to do with the film. And then, like I said, you get sketches of these sets. Both sides. Which again, it's a really nice, interesting extra. And there's a plane. It features in a prominent scene. So uh, yeah, all nicely done in that regard. Let's get these back together. And then you also get a booklet as well. It basically has, it's a, basically a vintage press book that's been edited down. But again, has all sorts in it. It's got write-ups on the cast. You've also got different kinds of posters. So yeah, it's just all really rather nice, interesting window into the kind of reception that it was getting at the time. And yeah, you've got that at the front, which again is really nicely done. You also get a poster, which is two different posters on one side of each. So you get the one that you will have seen basically with the, um, say, the premium collection um, version of this film from HMV. But then you get that poster as well, which I really, really like. I love the colours on that. So yeah, that's really nice done. And finally, but not last, not only do you get a really nice half box, but you also get steel book, which again is nicely done. Wish they never had the writing on the back of these, but alas, they do. And then you get special features and the Blu-ray on the film, and then the 4K itself. So yeah, really nice release. Um, kind of annoyed that I didn't get it at the time, but at least I did get it for less money than it was going for. And then an hour of video had have had their summer camp sale on, and I got a few from them. So first of which was Red Angel. Don't know much about that one. Um, Yakuza Law, Don't Torture a Duckling, which is the only one of the bunch from our video that I've actually seen, but it's an excellent film. Highly recommend that one. And then the Street Fighter Collection. So this has four films, I believe. Yeah, the first disc has Sister Street Fighter. No, it's three films, I think. No, four films. And then the second disc has Sister Street Fighter, Hanging Mary Fred. Return of the Sister Street Fighter and then Sister Street Fighter 5th Level Fist. So, yeah, four films, but I think it was only £8 is not bad at all. But again, not seen any of those. And then we got a couple from Eureka. Got this one because it was £4 off, I believe. And you were saying that they were running out of these, this version of the uh, release as well. So, um, yeah, decided to hop onto it. And, uh, yeah, got nice artwork for it yeah you got the different artwork for the other film on the other side of that uh, so you go with the slip cover as well then you also got a poster as well which again like the uh, posters for i think the uh, warrior 2 and the prodigy uh, the sun's prodigy or whatever it's called is really nicely done as you can see but then you also got that one as well which again Really nicely done. You really don't do enough posters anymore, to be honest, and I wish they would do more, because when they do do them, they do them really well. And also got a free film set uh, from Samo Hung. So the Iron Fisted Monk, Eastern Condors, and The Magnificent Butcher. I've only seen Eastern Condors so far, but that was a really, really good war film. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to the other two. But yeah, no poster or anything like that with this. And uh, yeah, this is a few years old now. This is 2019. So yeah, I doubt there's uh, that many of those going around. And then Imprint. Uh, got a few from those. i uh, got House of Cards. Which is a really good uh, like, kind of like thriller. Conspiracy thriller kind of thing. 
wasn't expecting much from it, but I really rather enjoyed it, even if the ending wasn't the most satisfying of films. And then I've got I'll Sleep When I'm Dead, which is a great cast. Clive Owen, Charlotte Rampling, Jonathan Reese Mayers, and Malcolm McDowell. Kind of like Dead Man's Shoes, only this came out the year before. And finally from Imprint, China Gate, which is another Samuel Fuller film, and another really rather good one from him as well. And a, yeah, good cast as well, Gene Barry, Andy Dixon, and Nat King Cole himself. Who uh, contributed a song to that uh, film. And then finally from 88 Films. I got a whole bunch of ones from them. Because they had a 2 for 15 sale on in HMV. But they also had one of their ones. Um, their special edition ones going for cheap as well. So I got the 8 Diagram Pole Fighter. Not seen this yet but I heard good things. And yeah that's the uh, disc. Some of these were limited edition as well, which I was really surprised about, which is the likes of the, the Flag of Iron, which again, a limited edition, really nice slip cover on it. But yeah, it's also got a poster and a booklet, which again, like I said, really was not expecting. So there's a the disc again with the uh, artwork that we've already seen, which is on the front cover as well. Then you also get a booklet the shot from the film and then inside you've got red and black attack unfurling the fury of Chang Yet Che's uh, glorious inventive martial arts masterwork the flag of iron not sure who that's by but yeah it's whole right up on that and you've also got shots from the film another guy getting hit in the head by a spear which doesn't look like a uh, fun time and then you also got like I said the poster which is double sided, yes. So you got the new artwork there. Ooh, is that upside down? No, it's not. So yeah, new artwork, which again, I really rather like. And then original artwork. Is that upside down? No, it's not. Uh, so yeah. Again, really wasn't expecting any limited edition versions to be going for 2 for 15 to be honest. Especially since I think this one came out. Yeah, it only came out in 2022. So again, I'm really surprised that's on for a 2 for 15 sale. And then we also got Dragon Lord uh, with Jackie Chan. Again, not seen that one yet. Also got Hero Shed No Tears, an early John Woo film. Really good really solid action it's really quite relentless in its action but it's solid nonetheless and uh, yeah if you enjoy your john woo kind of you know violence and action the way he does his action then uh, that will be right up your street and we've got another limited edition version for 2 for 15 we've got hero which is a remake of the um the butcher the If something from the, sh the the boxer from Shantang, um, which is a uh, Shaw Brothers release, which was in one of the um, Shaw Scope Volume One. I didn't know that when watching this, so I didn't know, you know, it had a it was a remake essentially. But it's got Yan Bao in it, who's really great, and I have seen the uh, original film, and uh, yeah, I enjoy them just as much as one another. And again, got a uh, booklet on the go. Which has, do we need another hero? Examining hero, Corey Young's 1990s remake of the classic The Boxer of Shantung. Which I didn't read into this, so I didn't know this was a remake at the time. So, uh, yeah, but it's still a really rather great film. Properly great action scenes in it and everything. And this, again, also comes with a poster with its new artwork and, I believe, original artwork. I really like the new artwork, to be honest, so... Oh, not unfilled these so for a while at least. So they're kind of still quite, but yeah, I really like that new artwork. But the old wall artwork's pretty good as well. Nice color palette to it the blacks, the oranges, and the reds. Nicely done. And then one of their proper special limited editions was going on sale as well. I believe it was on Amazon. And that is the Iceman Cometh. Basically like Highlander in some regards. You know, two people at a time fighting to, um, you know, stop evil uh, from the other. Really nice hard box with this. 
and again you get well with this one you get a proper booklet you get a proper you get a double-sided poster you get a bunch of art cards you get two versions of the film you get the hong kong version and the extras on the first disc and then you get the taiwanese version on the second disc not since the taiwanese version but the uh the Hong Kong version was still pretty great, but I believe the Taiwanese version is slightly longer. Uh, yes, it's 12 minutes longer. So, But I found the Hong Kong version to be long enough, to be honest. I think it kind of outstayed its welcome a little bit, but yeah. And the art cards got some spoilers on them. Uh, got different versions of the posters on the back there. Got Time Warriors. Yeah, the opening fight scene is glorious, oh, by the way. Set in the snow. It's really well done. But most of the film is well done. It's just like the, uh, the tonal inconsistencies are the thing that really irked me a little bit. Because you go from a kind of like comedy romance, basically, in the middle to really rather dark scenes with the uh, protagonist. And then you get the poster, which is properly thick. Really thick, nice paper to it. Really should put some up, some of these posters up to be honest since I've got them. So yeah, there's the new artwork. That's what I believe is the original artwork, which I'm not a massive fan of, although I do like the uh, bit at the bottom. And then a big booklet as well, which as you can see is quite thick. I think it's several pages long. Uh, it's like 50 odd pages or something like that. Yeah, it even says in here an old to Highlander Jan Bowes Iceman Cometh by a Matthew Edwards, which is like 40 odd pages or something like that. So, big write up, but as you can see, not many words per page, so it's easy to digest. Uh, so, yeah, really impressed with that release. And then we also got a slip cover for Ricky O, The Story of Ricky, which is an hilariously violent film. Got some of the most graphic violence for any action film, and just the uh, image of on the cover there, which as you can see is half a head remaining and half a head being punched off. Sometimes you see a whole head being punched off, but why not half a head? That's just a bit more uh, ludicrous in that regard, I guess. But yeah, properly violent, but most of the violence isn't nasty violence. You know, there's very little violence that is committed towards people that can't help them or can't defend themselves. Most of the violence is committed by Riccio towards the villains, and that is certainly a better kind of, you know, way of doing it as well as I'm concerned. Then we have the Chinese Boxer. This is more of a standard edition, as well as Clan of the Lo Clan of the White Lotus again, more of a standard edition. So, yeah, whole host of films there, huge amount. Obviously, several of them are also in you know one release. So yeah, a lot to uh, delve into there. And like I said, I've not watched most of them. I think the only ones I've watched have been Casablanca. Um, but in terms of the eighty-eight films, it's like. Ricky O I've only seen, Iceman Cometh I've only seen, Eastern Condors I've also seen, Hero I've only seen, and Hero Shed No Tears. I think they're the only ones from that lot that I've seen. I have seen all of the imprint films, not seen um, the Angela Mal ones, not seen any of the Street Sister Street Fighter films or the Green Man or so yeah, there's most of them there are ones that I have yet to see. So yeah, they certainly bumped up my uh, watch list and the films that I haven't seen in my collection. But still, really pleased with the ones that I've seen so far. So hopefully the rest will be just as great. And uh, yeah, but yeah, August is probably going to be a bit of a light month with July and June being quite heavy. But there are still some new releases that are coming out, I believe, that should um, be rather uh, fun to look at. But regardless, thank you for watching. And if you've seen any of these films, I'd like to hear your thoughts on them. But nonetheless, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.